Welcome to Trail Manners, the podcast so dedicated to mountain trails and running that they broadcast out of a 78 Volkswagen bus in the mountains. Who does that? Eric and Joel are your hosts and will bring you the trail life as you may have not heard it before. You hear about everything from gear reviews, nutrition to keep you upright and moving forward, and they'll even bring guests into the bus for conversations that you won't hear anywhere else. It's time for some running adventures on a higher elevation. The old 78 Volkswagen bus is fired up and headed to the mountains. Here are your hosts for Trail Manners, proudly representing the 801 with their passion and love for the trails, Eric Manning and Joel Hatch. Welcome to the Trail Manners Podcast, episode number 120. Today, we're going to be talking with Harrison Fluman just days before the Bigfoot 200. So if this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Trail Manners Podcast is produced every week for enjoyment, and show notes are found at trailmanners.com. Come back often, and please feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Trail Manners. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get after it. All right, here we are with our last pre-race episode with Harrison Fluman as he gets ready to tackle, literally tackle right. Bigfoot, the 200-pounder, which would be a small Bigfoot, which I would outweigh. Right. Um, now people know I'm hefty. Um, but yeah, so you got just a couple days before the Bigfoot 200. And then Less we than a week. Definitely want to get you on the back end of that to just uh, kind of go over it, see how it goes, um, see how well you did. But um We'll do it. We'll start with just kind of a little, another little recap of the, the race. Okay. But then I had m- a lot of questions come through for you. This and I didn't give you <laughs> the list and say, here's the questions to be ready this for. It's a little nerve wracking. So it's yeah. kind of like a light, we used to do a lightning round with guests. That's that's what that was my favorite. Quirky we questions. Should br- we should bring it back. We should probably bring more guests back on the show since we don't launch very much on these days anymore. So maybe we should so baby just, step it. Just lightning round after lightning round. <laughs> but again, it's just. Apologize to the listeners. Just Eric here. Joel is not with us, but we do have Harrison to keep things fresh and funky. Um, but real quick, those of you that are not uh, familiar, we've had Harrison on a couple times already as he's kind of getting ready for his first 200-mile race. Because um, as everybody out there knows, Joel and myself are very intrigued by these 200-mile races. We had Sylvia Greer on. We've had Phil Lowry on, Ben Light. We've had some people that have done those in the past, and I still can't wrap my head around them, so I'm hoping the more I talk to people, the more I can, and I'd, I, I will never do one, and I'm going to throw that out there now, um, just because I've been running like seven milers lately, and that's taken a lot out of me. Never say never. Yeah, I did today. Okay. Um, I probably have before, actually, <laughs> on these. Um, but yeah, so we, we've had Harrison on, so we've had, uh, he was on episode... Oh, 113 and just probably 118, too, like a few episodes ago since we yeah. kind of skipped a few weeks. So. Uh, and then we had you on the uh, the Hard Rock episode a few weeks ago as well because we were down in Hard Rock hanging out. Um, but we had his backstory, so we're not going to go back over that. I'm going to make you go listen to one thir- episode 113 because it was solid. Thrilling. It was It was thrilling. It was... Uh, it's gripping. It was. Hanging on the edge of your seat. I thought so. I really did, too. I mean, I was waiting for the next thing to come out of our mouths. Like I was like... I didn't know what I was going to say, but it was you know, going to be okay. You crushed it. Um, but we had your backstory, your running history. Um, but those aren't aware, Bigfoot 200 um, is August 10th, so this show is going to launch, launch on the 7th, so that gives you three days to listen before Harrison tackles it, and you're more than welcome to follow him. I'm sure they do some tracking at some point on that race. They do. They do everything, really. Yep. I mean, those races are just unreal. I have a spot tracker, and yeah, they come bib number 10. Are you really? Yep. Nice. Doesn't equal eight, but we'll give that a slide. Yeah, they had, actually have you... Like, pick out some numbers, and they try to give you whatever oh, really? you want. Yeah, it's kind of cool. What was 10? Was that I, first, um, second, third? I think it was one of my numbers for baseball. So, five was my first. That was okay. my favorite number. So, five, five then he, like, iterations of five. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. So, was 10, like, your second pick? Because that would be the next iteration uh, of five. A, I don't know. I think you go five, 55. I think five, 55. Five, five, five. I think five. I did 35, because I was a big Frank Thomas fan. Oh, uh, the big hurt. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. big hurt. He's got um, the, like... Steroid commercials or the testosterone commercials well, yeah. now. He, yeah. he was he was steroid free yeah. according to him. He was not. I, I could believe that with him because he's just yeah. a big guy. He yeah, had a big build. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, five thirty-five. I don't know, but I ended up with ten. So okay. it's, it's it's good. Well, I'm a soccer guy, and I know people out there going, "Oh, that's messy." I'm like, "No, people, it's Pele's number." <laughs> 
Edson Arantes do Nascimento. That's his real name, the king. That's the original number 10. So that's why I picked it. That. That's why. Right. Because you're the king. Right. Big right Pele. now you are. Yeah. Big Pele. <laughs> 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 I can see that. Well, you got a Pele shirt on. Exactly. No, you got your Death Cab for Cutie yeah. shirt, though. Yes, yeah. And you just hit their concert last week. Thursday. Yeah. Two days, three days ago. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Um, but, yeah, so the Bigfoot 200, August 10th, uh, 206.5 miles. Um, you do have uh, luck, you know, I mean, they, they're generous, 105-hour cutoff. Yes. I still can't. I, I'm going to giggle quite a bit through this show again. Four days, five hours, that equals two. It's near Cougar, Washington, and Randall, Washington. There's 150 entrants they allow. I'm sure there might be some DNSs. Probably, yeah. Um, entry fees. Um, we won't go over that. You can check that out online. It's your uh, firstborn. Yeah, it's uh, seven ninety five if you get in early. Um, if you get in late, and I think they do other stuff too, like if you register yeah, I before think you can, or register for mall. I think you can get some discounts if you. Have I think Groupon has too. like twenty percent off if you go to <laughs> TJ Buy one, Maxx. It's a Bogo, I think. Yeah, yeah. If you go TJ Maxx <laughs> route, um, they I think like under some bottle caps stuff uh-huh. like that. It's like a box top for kids yeah, type thing. Perfect it's like a cereal. Yep, yeah. we should start doing that. Uh, that would just be send awesome. them in. Yeah, I got some Rice Krispies. Does that give me a dollar? So yeah, it's uh, it's it's you know I mean it's it costs money. Um, elevation. Let's go over that. It's forty two thousand feet of ascent, and yes. that means gain. That's up. Yes. And so I used to get those mixed up sometimes. Ascent mm-hmm. and descent, and I could never I couldn't figure out why people wouldn't say gain and loss. This that makes seems more sense so simple to me. too. And then I started descent. I'm like that's decent. Yeah, I got a little visual here for you if you wanna. Yeah, it looks pretty. Some ups and downs. It's not even ups and downs that freak me out. It's the number, like, aid stations at, like, 100 and something, and then mm-hmm. the finishes, too, Seems, whatever. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing, though, and this is, i got to tip my hat t- to the race director, who we haven't met yet, but I'm sure we'd be best friends. Um, there's 187.5 miles of single track. That's insane for 206 miles. Um, four by four dirt road. There's six miles. There are 13 miles of pavement, and that is probably why I won't run this race. Right. Um, that is it. That's it. You know, you get into double digit pavement, and I'm out. Right. Right. I mean, that's a half marathon. <laughs> that is a half marathon yeah. pavement. And uh, I know I'd probably blow up there going for a PR at that right. point. You gotta but push that, it. That's why I won't run the races. There's 13 miles of pavement. Exactly. So if that changes, you go out too hard on that. I, you know, I probably would. Mm-hmm. I'd probably. That's where I'm going to hit it. You are? That's where you're going to make up some time? Yes. Yeah. It's a good place to do it. 13 miles of a 200 mile. I'll yeah. make some it's time all up together, there. It's all I bet, in the middle. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's the finish. The last mm-hmm. 13. You're on the freeway. So like, so you just, you're playing just Frogger. Had it, just had it and just went, let's just finish on the road. Let's just finish. It's, it, we'll get to the park better that way. Um, here's the race description, and then we're going to get into it. So the race description, Bigfoot 200 is a point-to-point exploration of the Cascade Mountains in Washington State. Runners will explore such varied terrain as the otherworldly... That's what they have. Volcanic Mount St. Helens that erupted in 1980. Long mountaintop ridge lines and stunning forest, mountain, and lake views. Deep, old-growth forests as green and thick as a rainforest. Misty mountaintops. Cross countless streams and rivers. And finally, along ridge lines in Randall, Washington, north of Mount Adams, on their way to completing this massive, it's going to change your life, it says life-changing event, they might even, they might even, no, this is, this is the part where I would totally, if, if this was more of a 70% chance on this next part, they might even see a big foot or two. If that mm-hmm. was 70% chance, I'm in. Yeah. Because I am the big, big foot Sasquatch, I'm in. I believe it. You're not going to turn me. It's like a short corner. You're not going to change my mind. <laughs> Um, but it says it's been known to have six sleep stations with full aid, hot food, medical, and crew, and there's 14 full aid stations um, on top of that. Yes, there are. Uh, course record, which I know you're gunning for, is 55 <laughs> hours and 49 <laughs> minutes for the for the lady, Thanks for the men. That out there. Yeah, and the women is uh, Van Fam at 7222. Let's go Both for the women's record. Year. Let's go for the women's go record. Go for it. There yeah, you go. That's still style, 7222. <laughs> um, last year, 78 finishers, 31 DNFs. Um, first place, again, was 5549. Last place was 10439. So that is uh, just minutes under cutoff. I believe. Getting your money's worth. Yeah, you're getting every penny milking it for sure. So so now we're going to get into it. So you're getting closer. Last time we talked, yes. you hadn't looked at the website yet. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've done that over the You've past few you know, so weeks. You got your uh, modem kicking. Yes. Your dial We've logged rocking. on AOL. Got your you dial dialed it up. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Here we go. Took a while. So you went back. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions, and then we'll dive into listener questions. Okay. 
um, because there's some really good ones. And I, I want to, before we even start, thank you to the listeners that sent questions in. They're from all over the country. Um, and it made me proud because there's a couple of them that you've had to listen like carefully. Like there's one question in here I'm super pumped. And if the guy emails me back, I'm giving him a prize just because it was such a great question. Wow. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Can I try to, to pick running. it out? Yeah. Oh, you just narrowed it down. All right. Yeah. It has nothing to, well, I mean, you'll, you'll pick it out. All right. It has nothing to do with running, though. But, uh, yeah, last time we talked, we talked about crew and pacers. You know what? I'm going to go into the questions because I don't want to ruin the questions. Let's do because it. Because there might be some that way. So, okay. So um, the first question um, comes from Jill in Idaho. So thank you, Jill. Um, what is your biggest concern knowing it's your first 200 miler? Biggest concern is uh, sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation. Yes. Okay. Um, just because I mean I finished 100 milers. I've been, I, mean, I guess the time on your feet is going to be much more. But I've, I've actually um, I've finished 100 milers like feeling like I could actually go further. So I don't think, well, knock on wood, you know. That's going to be a huge, huge issue, but um, that many nights, I think, is my biggest concern is sleep deprivation. Okay. So, um, and we've got obviously have some sleep stations and whatnot. So, I mean, I, I plan on on sleeping when I when I'm tired, even though I mean you're tired all the time, yeah. really during all this. So it's going to be kind of a weird. I'll probably rely on Pacer extraordinaire to help me with that so but i do plan on sleeping but the sleep part of the lack of sleep is, is my biggest concern okay well then i'm going to follow i'm going to skip ahead and follow up for francisco here we go in okay. colorado did you figure out a sleep strategy so he listened to the last show he did and so we, while we're talking about sleep um, and some of these some of the things that we talk about we might um, regurgitate based on questions later on right. the line so yeah what's a, do you have a sleep strategy well um I do have a, a strategy in terms of like a little bit of pacing. So I, I do, as far as the first half, which is 100. 100 which, mile, half of two. This is kind of weird to say that. Um, I don't plan on sleeping for that. Um, but there are, I do have the sleep stations kind of listed out here. I, I think I'm going to lot for a couple hours of sleep time, but I don't think I'm really going to be able to plan it based on the sleep stations. Yeah. And I listened to you know Phil's podcast, and I know he tried to do that and would just lay there and just – couldn't fall asleep. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm thinking hopefully only a two to three hours of max sleep time overall, but we'll just see how it goes. So, I'll try to do it with the sleep stations, but if not, I mean, we'll just have to do it. Because don't because uh, take the, a dirt nap. Yeah, I think that's the thing is you're going to be tired, and yeah. if you if you have a planned sleep, like okay, when I get to mile. 140, I'm going to yeah. sleep. But you roll in, say it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's warm, and you're just not ready yet, right? Yeah. And so it's like, well, are you going to try and force it for 10 minutes and then maybe get some snooze? So I, I like, yeah, I like I the think strategy of like when my eyes close and I fall, I'm going to sleep then. Right. Yeah. Just let me go. Let me, this is the time. No, I, I think it would be the sleep stations obviously probably are very helpful, and they'd probably be very necessary um, if you didn't have a pacer or anything like that. Yeah. So I think having a pacer will help. Okay. Good. Well, thank you, uh, Francisco in Colorado. Um, so let's. I'm going to skip around these because okay. you're kind of hitting on some of them. Um, so here we go. Scott in Utah. How many pacers will you have since we're talking pacers? I will have three available pacers. So we've got three three folks coming: Jeremy Sawinski, okay. Brian, and my wife, and then uh, Debbie Farka. So um, Jeremy's going to do the majority of it. Yeah, because so he's done it before. He has paced the entire possible amount at Tahoe. Which um, is a few years ago, hundred and uh, about uh, probably buck fifty. Something yeah, like that. I remember him saying that at yeah. Buffalo. He's like, "Yeah, I ran. I paced him. I yeah. did like a hundred, and we were like." And, um. and I've ran with Jeremy, and I he's a very, very competent. Oh yeah, you know, guy. You're in so good I, hands. Yeah, no, that's a huge, huge thing for me. So he's gonna, um, and we we're meeting with him tomorrow, so we're ironing it all out. But starting at mile forty six is when I can pick up a pacer and okay. I plan on having a pacer the whole time. Okay. So I think Jeremy will go the majority of it. I would bet, you know, barring him just getting tired or not he'll go over a hundred miles. And I'm hoping that Debbie can do um um like the relief portion. Why are you, why are you giggling? I don't know. You was, were going somewhere some with that. Video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Debbie can do relief. Not in Dallas. The, right. Yeah, that's right. where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. Old school. So I'm hoping that Debbie can relieve uh, Jeremy, you know, for maybe a 20, 
whatever mile. Uh-huh. And then I'll have Brian um, for the last, hopefully, 20, I think there's 23 miles. For the last one. For the last to the finish. Well, I thought, it was in, I thought it was interesting. I think this, this isn't going to come up in the question, so I'm going to interject my question. Or it's not even a question, it's a statement. So we saw, um, where were we? Uh, Hard Rock a few weeks ago. Yes. And we saw Ben Light, who's yep. uh, an accomplished runner, and especially the 200s. And he was saying that, he's like, oh, yeah, Bigfoot, your crew's going to be driving over yeah. 500 miles. Yeah, and that was, I mean, I know Brian's going to be texting him soon. Um, I did, uh, So we're going to, there are some spots where, I guess, crew can't access. Yeah. I sent an, an email recently about that. So That might help. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a little bit more at ease because I'll have a pacer from 46 on. Yeah, so it's not as huge you. for me, um, so to speak. But um, And I think we're going to have, because uh, they have a bus that goes from the start to the finish, or the finish to the start, excuse me. So we're staying at the finish. So um, I think they're just going to throw me on the bus and get me to the start that way. Because I've heard of people getting lost oh, to really? the start. And, you know, it's it's like a two-hour drive, just two-and-a-half-hour drive just to get to the start from the finish. Yeah, so that's that's what I was wondering because that's a lot of... That's a lot of miles. A lot of miles. On the rental car, yeah. yeah. And plus, you know, as we've talked about in past podcasts, and I don't think this is going to be on one of the questions again so I can say it. Right. Um, when you... when you People out there that are used to being in, say, let's go 50K, 50-mile, 100-mile, where there are aid stations and your crews can see you. Sometimes it's like if you're doing a 50-miler, you're like, okay, I should be in between like 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. And that's a big window an hour, but this one is going to be different. No, this is huge, yeah. I mean, you could say, I want to be there between like noon. I'm going to be there at noon or like 6 p.m. Saturday. We'll do this this Saturday. I'll see Saturday. Yeah, I've got a couple times on this little pace chart thing, but I'm not really going to put too much effort into it. Um yeah, it's just it's kind of a lot of variables to to think about. As far as carrying, you know, I'm not a huge drop bag person overall. I, I don't really know why. I mean, I just don't like to put the time and effort into it. But I do plan on carrying the essentials as far as um, you know, clothing. Yeah. Um, you know, the waterproof uh, Gore-Tex and you know, waterproof pants, and I plan on carrying enough. As far as that goes to Take care survive, of yeah. Okay. So, so if you know, if we a crew misses a spot, it wouldn't no be a big deal. deal. And I, I don't have a, like a, I don't have like specific nutritional needs or whatnot. So yeah. that's not you know something I'm gonna worry about. Now, um, are you gonna let me take a picture of that card so I can show yeah, people? Absolutely. Because he's pretty. He's got it from last time to this time. Oh, we got it dialed in. You're much more advanced. Yeah. I told you I would. I, I yeah. believed you because you've just been focusing on running, and I, I get absolutely that part. we could. Um, so I think that helps with. Uh, uh, where is the question? I got it on here somewhere. Oh, Pacers from Scott in Utah. So thank you, Scott. The next question comes from Eric in Ogden. Is this um, Eric with an E or an A? Uh, I can't even read it. <laughs> it's kind of Ill- 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 What is it? Not legible on my email. But it okay. says, do you like big Eric butts? Eric M? Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> it was Eric M. Eric M. And he says, do you like big butts and cannot lie? I do. Okay, all right. That's, that's good. Yes. That's a, it's a firm, that's an I hope some people out there get that. When I was, yeah. when I was thinking that, when I read that, because it came in as an email to me. Right. anonymously. Yeah, anonymously. Yeah. It was from Ogden. When I read that, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I get that. But I hope the listeners I can connect do. with that. All right, good. Yeah. All right, here we go. Next one is going to be, uh, it's kind of, I want to say it's redundant, because we had... Uh, the biggest concern going into your first 200 miler. Okay, so we covered that with Jill. Yes. So Mark from Colorado asked, "What's your biggest concern overall? Like just with the whole race? I mean, you can." Cons- and he didn't say this, but I'm going to help him expand. Like weather, <laughs> I'm pretty good at that. There you go. For people. Yeah, you yeah. can. T- you could tell by the tone of his email what he meant. I could, and I've, right. I know I've known Mark for a long time. Yes. Yeah, because there's only one in Colorado that's spelled <laughs> with a K, so that helps. Um, right. But yeah, is there like something other than? I know it's your first 200, um, but what, what's some of your big concerns? I'd say overall the biggest, I mean, it's not something I worry about, but because I don't, it doesn't really have a whole, whole lot to worry about, nothing you can do about it, but um, I am a little concerned about overall pacing. Yeah. Um, pa- like, what do you mean? Like, not your pacer, but your No, pace, my pacing. Your Just pace. my ability to, to, to extend it out and go at the pace that is required for a... 200 miler. Okay. So, I mean, I have like, a, you know, a chart here that I'm trying to do, you know, obviously 70 hours is my goal. Um, I want to try to get that first half. Um, 
I'm putting on here at 32 hours, so a 32 and a 38 okay. is my goal. But in my mind, I write this down, I type it in, I know that the the likelihood of me going at 32 hours for the first 100 is probably not likely. See? So I'll probably come in a little okay. bit faster. So oh, my, oh, okay, my, there we go. My, my concern is just my ability to... Not go too hard. Right. Pa- like pace yourself. Yes. Okay, because when so, you said 32 hours, I'm like, okay, I know it's a 200-mile race, but not doing one, I'm thinking, well, may- and I haven't looked at your yeah. ups and downs or anything, but I'm like, there's, you know. There's, yeah, there's, so the first 100... It's, there's, it's, the difference is not discernible to me. I mean, it seems pretty, yeah, I mean, pretty consistent like, the whole way. Yeah. So, I mean, that's my kind of... I mean, it's not something I worry about, it, it, but it's a, a recognition of past failures in hundreds okay. to where... Um, pacing uh, may not have been the best. Okay, that makes sense. So now this is kind of along with that, and just coming to me, and that's why we're doing this there too. We go. I can throw as many questions. Right, as I this want. is again from Eric from, from Ogden. This is from me. <laughs> I'm going to own this one. Um, are you? Have you looked at? Have you looked, or are you familiar with weather patterns there? Like, have you looked at the forecast? Um, do you, I know you're going to be on mountains, right? So, we will be on mountains. So. Um, you, Temperature-wise, it's going to be cooler, which is nice. I do know that I've heard, obviously, from Ben and um, Candace sent out kind of a reminder that that first, basically the first section before I get a pacer, so through mile 46, is traditionally very hot and exposed. I don't know exactly what that means because I'll have to look at the temperatures a little more because I've I've been running in ungodly heat here, which has been horrible. So I don't really know what heat and exposure means there, but... Uh, we'll take that into consideration, and I know that um, I think this Phil's podcast or someone else is where that water, carrying extra water during those first you know, oh, yeah. fifty miles was was important. Yeah, so, I remember that. Um, what was the question again? I, I lost it. The weather. There you go. You're, yeah, you were doing it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't looked at it. I know Brian has, um, but it'll be cooler than here, which is good. Um, but weather-wise. As far as storms or, or things like that, I'll have the re- you know I'll have the required stuff to I'll have my Gore Tex and my you know you know rain pants and and things like that. And you and case. you've run races for a long and run not just races but just run for years. Do you ever are there elements that you struggle in, or do you just like take it as it comes? Heat is my worst. Okay, absolutely worst. I mean, I, I've we've ran a lot in heat this this year just because of my work schedule and just when I can get out. Um, but heat is easily my worst okay. um pretty consistent every hundred is i'll get completely baked during the and you mean the day. yeah absolutely yeah. baked. Yep. we're in washington <laughs> um i'll get completely you know overheated and then once night hits and it cools down then i get another like i just i'm a whole new person so. yeah um that's my worst i think is heat okay um, here's a fun one from Bonnie in Florida, and I can tell she listens to the podcast. She says, "Will you and Eric? Do, will you make Eric take a selfie with you?" Yes. Okay. Perfect. Absolutely. I was hoping you'd say Done. yes so we could do that because, uh, you know, my podcast lately we could do it tonight. Have been focused on selfies. I've for seen me. that, and P- I saw the one you posted today. It's yeah, they've nice. been stepping up. Right. Yeah. And I don't so know if that, that counts as a selfie. Like, you give a super long arm that took that. It doesn't really make which any one? sense. That last one you posted. I don't know. There's, There's two, two other people with you. They took that one, but it's cons- uh, they. It's people call it a selfie. That's why I'm s- concerned so. with selfies. Is selfie now just like a portrait of yourself? You just you don't have to take it was, yourself. So that was what I was going to do on Facebook this week: is find selfie, looked up somewhere in some, you know, dictionary from the right. web intro web, right. and post the definition because people have asked me that. They're like, well, "Let's get a selfie," and I'm like, "Is that just a picture?" It's a self portrait. Yeah, yeah, I assume. Yeah, so I don't know if a selfie can include more than one person. I, I think you can. I took one selfie. I thought that it had to be that you have to take it yourself. That's what I thought it was, too. But people, right. are, people are like, no, get a selfie. So if huh. I take it with other people, that could be a selfie. I though. believe it can, okay. yes. So I took one grilling burgers of my just me that and counts. my spatula. Absolutely. Okay, so that was a good yeah. selfie. So we'll get one. We'll get a selfie. Okay. Bonnie in Florida, we got it. Coming your way. Come, coming right at you. Uh, next one. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let's go to, here's one you kind of touched on a little bit. Stephen in Maine. So, wow. so we're going back okay. to Maine here. What is your fueling strategy, and how will it oh, differ God. from a 100-miler? Jesus. Um, right? he's, he's on you. Oh, my God. So yeah, what is it, and how is it going to differ from a 100-miler? Steven, I don't have one currently. <laughs> um, all right. This is probably a long answer. Uh, I we don't, got, we I don't have a specific s- a fueling strategy. So um, 
I, we've talked about it before um, with the last 100 that I ran, um, where the slow slow pace, I've had traditionally, I've not been very good with fueling. And it's been stomach-related issues. Yeah, so it's kind of an ongoing. Pretty thing. classic Sensually. outrunning your stomach type of scenario. Heat plays a huge factor in that for me. Me too. Um, where, you know, it gets to a point where I just, I'm throwing up, throwing up, throwing up, and just just takes a long time to, to turn it around. So I don't have really a specific fueling strategy. What I typically do, because um, I'm holding my hand, this is not a video. We're not, you know. You keep, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to keep I'm holding my hand like like I'm, like I'm talking to like some sort of you know, camera. Talking to Stephen. Right, Stephen, yes. Um, typically what I do um, is carry enough calories that I think I can eat. And I don't, I don't subscribe to any like, um, you know, sports whatever it is, or EFS, or okay. I didn't know that whatever. Was. Like sport, I thought sports, you subscribed foods, to Sports Illustrated. That's what I thought you were Ultra running magazine, that's it. Um, um, so I don't really have like a traditional, what you would think is people eat during these races. Like I know, you know, Tailwind, I've tried Tailwind. It's great for a while. I've never had anything like sports nutrition-wise that have, has worked for me past like 50 miles. Have you, and I'm going to throw this out there because I'm, I'm, I'm a big proponent. Have you tried scratch drinks? I have not. Okay, you, need, not. you need to. Because those are they have electrolyte calorie and they taste yummy and they're yeah. not overpowering. I mean that's that's very intriguing. No, I, the, after the race is over, right. I'll bring you we'll some. We'll try that for the bear maybe. Yeah, they're, there you they're go. tasty. Um, and I I like Tailwind. I just for whatever reason I get tired of things. I get lazy. My body just doesn't want to take it in. Gotcha. So I'll just be eating real food. Okay. By real food, I mean candy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and air station food. Yeah, Airheads. Air heads. Um, Skittles still on the menu, or are those gone now? No, I had some Skittles today, actually, okay. around. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll get some protein in there somehow with beef jerky yep. and whatnot. Just in and case Sasquatch. Right. We'll get that. It was a it's nice a commercial. ad campaign. Yeah. It was good. What, what is that? Jack so, like, I mean, there's nothing specific. Like, you could th- say, well, why you, maybe all these w- terrible things you eat, like, jack up your stomach. It's nothing. I've tried actual, like, race foods that... Everything jacks up my stomach, yeah. so I'm hoping the slow pace will help. Will help, well, but I don't have anything really, really specific. I'll, I'll we'll, honestly, we'll go to the grocery store the day before and we'll load up with whatever seems all right. But I'll probably do a lot of aid station stuff. Well, and that's what I was going to mention is I know people were saying oh, this a lot. I can't remember who it was or the exact number, but it seemed like it was between seven and twelve hamburgers were eaten by yeah. one. It might have been Ben. Yeah, I'm going to throw that out there. So if I was wrong. Um, I'm wrong, but you had like a one, they got three, one and three shot. I did. That's yeah. I don't think it was Sylvia. <laughs> I don't know if she could eat that ben and hammer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there you yeah, go. I think Phil would do more uh, MREs. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going with Ben. I did deductive Absolutely. reasoning in my head. There you go. Um, but yeah, I think the aid stations are just loaded with yeah. stuff, and, and and we all know when you race, sometimes you go into somewhere and just something at that time yeah. sounds good. And and for me, it's the same thing that always happens. That you just said, I'll I'll load up on something, whatever it is that I think it's going to sound great, and hope you don't visit mouth. the vomitorium. Right, which is not real apparently. <laughs> uh, um, and it just doesn't work. So I'm I'm at least at the point in in doing this for a little while where I'm not set on a on a nutrition um, strategy to where if it fails, which it always will, that I get thrown off by it. Yeah. I know, I know I'm going to feel shitty as far as my stomach goes, and just recognizing that and and just problem solving through it as, as best you can is, is is all I can really do. Now, have you do you have you come across a remedy that helps your stomach when it goes south quicker? Like, do you do like a ginger? Those ginger yeah, it doesn't work. Or do you have any ginger ale, or is there anything that kind of helps you that way? The only way? thing that's ever really helped me, um, honestly, has been, and this is after like a lot of throwing, like a lot of vomiting, um, and I think it was uh, happened like sev- like really significant vomiting. Um, I can think of two or three occasions. Um, I have to. It, sometimes it gets to the point where I can't even take in water almost. Mm-hmm. So. What I have found that, that works is I have to, like, literally cut off. I have to go a lot slower. I mean, you got to reduce your effort. Yeah. At least I do. And then I, I won't take in anything for, like, a couple hours. Just to kind of let your body reset? Yeah. And it yeah. just resets. Um, and that's the only thing I've I've found that, that works. Okay. So, I mean, I'll try to maybe sneak in, like, some, you know, jelly beans or something. But just to keep See what going. Happens. But 
Yeah, that's the only thing I figured. Play the game. Right. So, <laughs> and a lot of that'll cause it. And a lot of people. Up. So I, I go back in ultra running, and you brought that up because it's a, it's one of the funniest things I remember. And uh, there there is an individual, and he was awesome at ultra running. His name is Joe Kulak. He's from the East Coast, and it's an older name in trail running. A lot of people won't even recognize him, but he was a stud. And I was at Leadville one year, and I'm sitting around a table being the greenhorn, just hanging yeah. out. And it was like Scott Jaime had Joe Kulak, and there's like two other, and I can't even remember off the top of my head. Um, so, someone, Garrett Grobbins, uh, who was writing for Trail Runner Magazine, just like, I was, they knew everything. Yeah. And Kulak, he was known for puking on himself. <laughs> And his idea was, <laughs> if I shoot two gels, 200 <laughs> calories, and I throw up, there is a chance 50 calories stayed in. I like that. But that was his thing. And there yeah. were so many. And I, I giggled. Yeah. But then I went back and looked at. There's a lot of race photos. He had, like, puke oh on his chest God. as he was running. Yeah. <laughs> but he was I don't awesome. quite go to that extent. I do. I have learned that um, over the many failures of, of nutrition is um, I found over the, the first few times it happened, which it happens every time, that I would, I would give up too easily. So the, the worst thing you can do is, is to stop trying and to stop, you know, ingesting calories because you kind of get into a tailspin. Yeah. So just just keep at it and, you know, reduce your effort, and it sucks. You're not going the pace that you want to go, but reducing your effort and keep trying to, to get some sort of calories in. That's good. And I, I, I subscribe to the Kulak sometimes when I've ran. shoot it down, see what happens. It, I mean, it was a long time. It was Brian Fisher was the yeah. other guy that was there who's an Speaking of shooting stud. it down, yeah, I had to take a shot today on my run with – Effing pissed me off. Why, did you go on a peak? Yeah, kind of. I don't do that. No, I didn't want. I threw an absolute fit. I would, but I did it anyway. You, yeah. Yeah. Easy peer pressure right. given into. Yep. So here's a fun question for you, Jeremy. And that's kind of funny, too. Not, no offense, Jeremy. Jeremy. No offense. And you'll yeah. understand why. He's from Olympia. Here's right. question, so I know he listens to this show. Here we go. Best Pearl Jam concert you've ever attended? Because we actually talked about yes, we this. did. Um, and its name's Jeremy. Thank you. It is, it's, it, yeah, it, I've it, heard it. that song many times. Um, um, the best show that I've ever been to is actually my first show. Okay. Which was is is uh it just happened to be it was uh it was in State College, Pennsylvania. So we're Penn State campus. Um, actually, the date and it's really sad that I remember. I remember the exact dates of some of these shows. So May third, holy cow, two thousand three. Um, you were 14. It was 14 years old. <laughs> I think I was 18. 19, <laughs> Damn, I, I was close. Yeah. Um, so the summer before I started at Penn State, a buddy and I went up um, to see that show. And it was the last, it was the finale for their one of their legs in their North American tour. So that was easily, it was it was a classic show. That, I mean, awesome. I, I had like three and a half, four hour show. Holy it was, cow. It was, it was, that was probably my, my favorite, best show. And it happened to be my first one. So That's even better, out. yeah. So, uh, Jeremy, that was a great question because that, uh, that proves he's been truly listening, if Jeremy is a guy. Right. Um, I don't want to throw that out there. No, don't commit. Uh, here's from Evan in California. He said, did you reach out to people to ask questions or, or and did you research blogs online about 200-mile races? So did you reach out to people? I know you listen, you've mentioned you listen to some podcasts from the trail, yes. from the trail manager group, yes, which yes, people yes. should be subscribing to. Right. Um, but did which you I do. talk to people, or have you, like, read blog posts? Short kind of answer is no. Okay. Which is probably not a good thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my research has, has been this wonderful manual that I'm sitting manual. here. And um, your podcasts, to be honest. They've been – I don't know, I like – the ability to hear yeah. people talk about it. So those podcasts have been very, very helpful. And, I mean, I, you know, I guess blogs would be good, um, but just to hear the stories from the podcast makes it a little bit gotcha. more real for me. It's good. That's Thank a good way to spin the fact that I have not done enough research. Okay. Well, I was so, going to say that's a good right. way to spin the fact you can't read. But right. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I have Brian read this manual to <laughs> me. Oh, that's just your a page story. every night. <laughs> page every night so I can go to sleep. You like highlight that one. Yeah, mile 62. <laughs> Blue Lake to Windy Pass. Yeah. There's like sleeping. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. This is a good question from, and again, I tell you what, I met a lot of people. From the Trail Manners, I don't know, we call it Nation. I think everybody does. We'll, we'll come up with a cool name, Trail Manners Tribe, something, um, yeah, well. at El Vicaro Loco. Right. And and I met a lot of putts. I just met met them all summer. And, man, they're smart people. Like, it makes me more happy that smart people listen well, to Well, yeah, that's too. what you want. But when I read some people. of these questions, I'm like, okay, these people listen to the show. Like, 
It's specific. Mary in Georgia. You mentioned the Bigfoot 200 was the only one you were really interested in due to the location and terrain. Correct. Is there somewhere else or another location you would be interested to do a 200 mile if they had one? Oh, my God. That's a good question. Right? I'm well, let me stall a little bit. Okay. <laughs> well, because I can't it? think of that right yet. So, um, so the reason why I wouldn't do the other two, mm-hmm. we'll start there. Um, Tahoe. That's probably because I had a really bad experience at the Tahoe Rim 50. Okay. Like five, six years ago. I just remember it being, it was a very record, like, hot year. And those trails, from what I remember, are very, in normal temperature, they're, they're great, but they're exposed. Okay. So it's that hot. was s- super hot. So that one, to me, I, I X that off just because of a past experience that may or may not be real. Okay. I mean, it was real. Yeah. Because I was there. But... So that's why I didn't want to do that one. And uh, Moab. Uh, Moab, I, I've done, you know, we've done Red Hot. You've been down there a couple of times, obviously. I, I can't imagine doing all that running on slick rock no, or sand or sand or oh. where you can see for miles. And of and course, it's two hundred and forty miles. Yeah, yeah, that just at seems, least appealing to you. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure. I mean, that's. I'm sure it's incredibly difficult. Oh yeah. It's, it's very pretty too. I mean, that's what's kind of. It's a different pretty. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what's the question again? Yeah, I, if you I stall over, this, man. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm going to go back to paraphrase. So is there another location or terrain that you would in, be interested if there was a 200 miler there? Oh, like man. If, you could, if there's somewhere else, a type of place, what would it be? Because you just said, okay, there was three 200s. That's the one I'm picking because it's the one I right. like the most. But if there was like your dream 200 mile location. I'm trying to think of good places that I've ran. So, I mean. Other favorite races, you know, I mean, Waldo was in Oregon. Oregon. That was Northwest. Pretty, Northwest uh, was nice. I mean, uh, anything up, which would be incredibly difficult, but anything up, you know, Montana, like Bozeman area. Oh, that'd be tough, too. It would be incredibly difficult, but um, places in Montana would be would be fun. How about a Hard Rock 200? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, that, that, that's People funny that I, I signed up for this race after I didn't get into Hard Rock, and it's like, well, what's more difficult? Well, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, but 200. Yeah, yeah, probably. I don't know. Um, those are the two kind of places I can think of. Um, I'm sure you can link something together here, to be honest. Probably could somewhere, but permitting. Yeah. Like again, just kind of your dream. Yeah, dream. Thing. I would say, I Pacific Northwest. So that's kind of that's why this race. I'm hung up on the to me. PNW yeah. myself. A lot of conversations about the PNW this yeah. weekend for me. Um, here's one from Anonymous on Grant oh Avenue, in apartment 429. <laughs> Anonymous. Um, <laughs> Eric what, with an E. Nope. Uh, <laughs> what color are Eric's eyes, and is it easy to get lost in them? They are very easy to get lost. I'm oh, colorblind, sorry. which is weird, but I'm not. But <laughs> very easy, yeah. You just kind of stare. That's why I got lost in a couple of those questions. You just lose your yeah. train of thought? Yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah. So, folks, that's that's the answer if you're, if you're curious no. there. I, I don't know who that was anonymous, so I can't. Right. Um, yeah, anyway, moving on. Not confirmed who asked that one. Not at all. Um, God, this is fun. This is a lightning. This is lightning round two point oh. And here's another one. Aaron right. from Idaho, and it's E R I N. Right. So I'm I'm guessing um, a lady. Right. Um, are you looking to just Are you looking for just a finish, or do you have a time goal in mind? I do have a time goal, okay. um, and that is that is seventy hours. Okay. And that's really only to do to the fact that we have a concert that <laughs> night. Jack White. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, I kind of picked 70 hours. I mean, I looked at other, other people's finish times. I know Phil finished in you know, 71-ish, okay. 72. And anything, I, I, and I kind of, you kind of look at your past races as far as hundreds go, and you look at your times there, and you kind of double them, and then add a, you know, a bunch of shit show time in there where you know it's going to be bad. So Very 70, fun. I kind of just landed on 70 as a round number. Okay. So, But, you know, obviously finishing it okay, so well, this is is good. here's a good question you got the jack white concert you've got yeah. yourself going all four of us are going all of you are going yeah, this is a commitment so what happens <laughs> if you're running slower than you were expecting and you may not finish in time to hit the jack white show do you drop does your crew take no, off and leave I, you i would say that the crew takes off and leaves me and so and i just, would be perfectly fine with that okay yeah i mean okay. they've got uh I would give them my cell phone number because my cell phone because one my t- one, two of the tickets are on my cell phone, you know, the Ticketmaster, whatever okay. the hell that thing is, yeah. and we have two paper tickets, so I would be perfectly fine with them 
Just going just and picking going. you up when it was over. Yeah. Maybe picking you up a T-shirt. Right. Give me a T-shirt. Take a couple of videos and under sticks. Right. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Done with it. I would that. not. I would not blame him at all. Okay. That was mine. So that's good. It I'm glad Eric. to hear that you just keep going. Um, Stephanie in California has a question for you. Harrison. Yes. Have you ever been in this area before? I have not. You've never been up there. I have not. So all your all your stuff is through the manual that you get read before you go to bed. Yes. And yep. do you do you look We're online? Almost through it. Have you seen photos of the? I course? have seen photos. Okay. I've seen some of the photos on the Instagrams. Um, Candace does a good job there. Um, I have not watched the video. Sometimes it's good to be surprised. Yeah. You know. At least that's it's a good thing to tell yourself. And there are people really. people there are races out there that post photos that actually aren't on the course. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. I'm not going to name races. Okay. Okay. From like, ultra, 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 there's some races in Utah that have done that. Oh, they wow. They posted pictures. It's like the Delicate Arch, and it's in like northern Utah. It's like, you'll see that. No, it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, we're going to this part. I mean, this is the race, and they'll take a, the pictures like, well, that's nowhere near the course. That's funny. But people see it. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, God, that's beautiful. And after, like, hey, where was the... Um, you know, oh, it's just whatever. A photo. Like, no. where's, where's the waterfall? Yeah. It's like, oh, this was uh, the desert of Moab. <laughs> <laughs> that was a water fountain right. on macro. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I guess you can't trust that. You can't. So that's why I haven't really looked into it. And a lot of times, too, what I end up finding, if I'm looking to race and I'll look, because, you know, I'm a race director. I have an ultra sign up, so I put good photos. I try to put yes. good photos to appeal, but if I'm interested in a race, I will go to their website, and a lot of times I'll have links to people that have taken photos on the course. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'll look at, like, real people photos. Right. If that's. I kind of go by word of mouth. I don't know. I don't really do a whole lot of – I mean, you've, you've been in, in in with, you know, promoting races and things like that. You know, I kind of trust – I have a few people that I trust their opinion, so if they – Say I should do it or I'd like it, I typically do. I don't have to really look into it unless it requires like a incredible amount of traveling or money. You're super so. trusting then to a yep. degree. I guess. That's a good thing to kind of maybe have. Yeah. Uh, Jill yeah. in Michigan's got a great question for you. And this okay, is a thanks, question Jill. I would ask, and I have asked in the past to people, what drives you to do a 200-miler? Oh, my God. Have you asked me that before yet? Probably. I, I think in the first show I, we, we discussed right. this, but it's been some time now, mm. so I don't know if it's okay. changed. But Jill, Jill wants to know from Michigan. Jill, thank you. It's a good um, question. Yeah, what what drives um, you to do a two hundred? Why a two hundred miler? Well, I can think of the evolution of how it happened. Um, you didn't get into hard rock. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> talked about that, <laughs> which I'm still I'm still kind of half and half on that. It'll be scary when if that, if when that happens. Um, for me, it was it was more of um, I obviously didn't get to hard rock. This is this this specific year as to what happened. Um, I was a little bit I was intrigued by by the longer distance because of a couple races that I did. Um, specifically, I am tough a couple of years ago, and then the bear last year, to where um, had pretty rough spots. At least, and I am tough, and you know finished phenomenally. And, and that's a hundred mi- hundred ish mile. Yeah, people that aren't six or so yeah. or whatever. And that kind of intrigued me a little bit. And then I um, ran the bear last year with not a whole lot of training and just kind of the idea to go out and have fun and see how it went. And that went really well. Um, so I just kind of got intrigued by the fact that, you know, I, I could keep going. So let's just see what, the, I guess, what the 200-mile distance is about. It's just a little so. farther than the bear. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a great answer for you. Um, so it's not one like, – it's not like – I want to test no, the it's not an ego I wanna, thing. I don't really. Uh, I want to tattoo two hundred on my. I neck. will tattoo a big foot or a yeti on me. I okay. will actually do that. I still want to so. do that, and I won't run the race. But I may actually have Jeremy do it. Are you? Yeah. That would be so cool yeah. since he's your pacer. Yeah. Because you could get it out on the course. You know what I mean? Not like get the tattoo. True. But you can get the ideas. Yeah. Going. That'd, That'd be, be a good, good discussion. That, yeah. That could go. We could spend thirty minutes on that. You know. We only have like seventy more hours, but yeah, yeah, have things to talk about. Um, so I don't know. I don't. There's no real like um, ego involved or trying to push myself. It, I'm just kind of interested in it. I'm just kind of. I, I, I'd like to see how my body handles the sleep deprivation. Um, I'd like to see how my body handles going slower if um, food, you know, calorie consumption is is better with that. So it's not. I mean, there's no real. You know, one thing that happened that made me want to do it or there's some ultra competitive um, drive to do it. It's just, I'm just interested. It intrigues me. So and I've heard good things by the few that ha- I know that have done it. So I guess, 
And you know, I might not do it again. Just we'll just see. One and see done. How it goes. Could be. Yeah. Never know. Let's see. Uh, next one's from Blair in Idaho. Pretty short. Pretty sweet. Okay. Aid station game plan? Question mark. Do you have an aid station game plan? Aid station game plan is to um, eat as much as I can. Okay. And to take my time. Okay. Because I was, I was going to yeah. expand on that because I know some yeah. races you're like, want I'm, I'm not saying you in particular, but like you want to get in and out yeah. as quickly as you can. Yeah, like for on me, or there's, 50, there's some there's some races that I've done that I you know I have, I'll be super specific on you know I, I do you know, like, like a pace chart for every hundred at least, um, and I'll have you know time in time you know projected time in the aid station, you know time out you know all the all the specifics on there, and I'm really time focused. Um, this one obviously I have an overall you know time goal, but I think the danger that I have is, is to rush through aid stations. That's yeah. my tendency. So um, my strategy, although not very baked out, which is a theme in all these podcasts, <laughs> is that I will take more time than I think is necessary just to make sure I can actually eat and get enough calories in. Well, you're cr- and this is coming from uh, Eric behind the microphone across right. the table from you. Are you going to have a conversation with your crew um, – Pre-race, yes. I know you have Jeremy tomorrow, but like yep. pre-race, saying, "Okay, when I get into aid stations, this is kind of my yeah. my idea of what I need or what I want, or to have this bag always there, or is there stuff like that going to be?" Yeah, going on? I'll, we'll have a conversation about. I mean, and I've raced, um, I've ran with Jeremy. We typically run Buffalo Run. We're always together for for a long time. So, and I know he's incredibly experienced. So I'll, I'll just tell him, you know, just just keep an eye on me, and make sure I'm eating enough at aid stations. And he'll know what that means. Yeah. So, um, and I think that'll help me slow down. I don't think I'll have the the mindset of getting in and out, but you never know what how messed up your head is when you get going. Okay. All right, here we go. Here's one from uh, Rebecca, and I don't know where Rebecca's from, so I apologize it wasn't on there. Just make something up. Uh, Re- Rebecca from uh, Guam uh, <laughs> says, uh, do you normally have issues with foot problems, blisters, etc.? cetera? Um, this is a two-parter. So okay. do you usually, uh, do you normally have issues with foot problems, blisters, etc.? Is that a big concern? Question mark. No. Part two, will you change out shoes doing the, during the race? Yes. So no to the first one. So you don't have foot problems. No. Like when you do hundreds and stuff, you don't get no. all blistered and gnarly. And, okay. Nope. Unless. Um, Is there a t- what's your trick to that then? Well, I have no really? idea. Really? Um, do you do anything fancy? No. Or do you just put shoes and socks on yes. and go? Okay. Um, so when I first started ultra, you know, switching from roads to trail like seven or eight years ago, I, um, I, you know, I read a lot of things and I you know, you hear about, you know, foot issues and time on your feet and all that stuff. I would purposely like get my feet wet and run long distances with, with wet feet. I don't know if that helps or anything, but did for some reason on? I think that, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, we did the barefoot thing. Okay. That's, that's, that's what, that's you what, toughened what, them up first. You right. Got them wet, that was the natural way. Yeah. Leather. what God intended. Yeah. Zero drop. Natural. <laughs> natural. <laughs> um, that's how I was born. I didn't right. have shoes on. Um, there's no arch in my feet. What was the question again? Yeah. God. <laughs> It's my, I'm sorry, it's my eyes. I'm sorry. I'm having a really good lost. eye day. Yeah. I'm having a good eye day. A lot of like, direct eye contact. It, it, there is. We're just in this room. Um, and Basically, do you have foot problems, blisters, out of concern? No. And then the second part was, will you change out your shoes? So, no, I don't. I think I said that already, yep. which I'm repeating myself. We'll get there. The only time, yeah, <laughs> give me like 20 more minutes, I'll yeah. get through this one. Becky from Guam is right. <laughs> the answer. <laughs> she hit a nerve, apparently. <laughs> um, no. The only race that I have had issues was the Bryce 100 because of the like I wouldn't even I wouldn't even classify it as issues. That kind of like that silty, moon dust silty yeah. stuff, which I've heard is obviously you know could be a, an issue on this course. Just in the creek, don't just right. be careful. Like early creeks, I will I will walk on water to get out of that. Yeah, you probably could. Right. Um, so no, um, I don't typically have issues. Um, I don't do anything fancy, to be honest with you. I I wear socks. I don't wear like. One of the toe socks. I don't do anything like that. Gingies. I don't wear like don't two wear pairs of socks. I, I just wear. Tube I think socks. I'm wearing uh, stance socks at the moment. Okay. Just because they look cool. Yeah, I love stance socks. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I will change out my shoes, so I'm going to bring probably three or four pairs just just to have them. Just to rotate, um, to yeah. freshen them up, or yeah. So I'll. Um, what shoe? Are they all going to be the same shoe, same model, same style? We're going. 
No, it's funny that meme I sent you a while ago, but um, they're all they're all pearl shoes. Yeah. So I, I might try. Um, I might start out with the N2s, just because I want to. But they'll mostly be N3s, just for the cushion. Gotcha. Yeah. But I will change out, okay. and typically, and I've gone. I think, and I say that. Every hundred that I've ran, I've, I have not changed out shoes or socks. I've never changed shoes on a hundred. On yeah. hundreds and two of them, I've changed socks once. Yeah. But I wish I wouldn't have. And I, I don't know. It's weird. I think unless I, I just don't have a whole lot of blister issues, and I'll get enough. Sometimes I'll get enough. I'll get some, like, dirt in there that kind of just packs in there that's all nice. and Kind of, like, fills the space. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. But I typically don't change them, but I'll have extra pairs just in case I, I need to okay. or want to. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to like break away from our normal conversation just because it's fresh, right? right? I just got back from El Caraloco. It's Sunday, August 5th. I got back this morning. I stayed an extra night. Um, a guy ran, I think he just did the 25K. I'm not 100% sure. He ran the entire race in cowboy boots. That's horrible. And that course, have you ever done the Vaquero? I have not. Okay, that course is pretty pretty tough, and there's some steep stuff, and he wore cowboy, and he wouldn't take them off at the finish. Like, he's still walking around. That's because his feet are, just, like, blown up in there. I he said, couldn't I even said, pull them off. Yeah, so he I probably, said, probably took some scissors to him I later. said they're fused together right. now. They spot welded <laughs> together, and he's going to have to go soak them in water right. to peel them off. Right. But it was crazy. And he was like, yeah, he goes, well, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. I'm like, that's why that's all actually the wrong. people have trouble. <laughs> <He's> just, <laughs> that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a crazy cowboy. I give, I tip my hat to him. But then I put it straight Rebel back hat. on and then shake my head, you know, <laughs> so whatever that means. Um, so thank you, uh, Rebecca. Where did we say she was from Guam? Guam. Yeah, from Guam. I almost said Guatemala that time, which will stay in Guam. Right. Um, what's my next question here? Um, Alex in Colorado. Okay. And uh, this is awesome because you got it here anyway. But he says, when I do hundreds, I have split times. Um, yeah. When I don't hit them, I can get caught up in it and it becomes frustrating. Yeah. Do you have those times for this race, question mark, second part, is that a focus? Um, very good question, because that I, I normally do. So normally, and I'm holding a card in my hand, you guys can't see it, um, I normally do have split times for every aid station. And, and, I, and I typically go through a process, if I'm not familiar with the course, I go through a process of looking at the elevation and the gain and all the things in between the aid station. I kind of have a pretty good system of guessing pace in between so typically for a 100 miler i do i do have that and and if it's a race i've done before like i don't know the bear or the buffalo run um which i don't really have any pace card for that anymore but typically um i'll have those pace charts and there are times there have been times where i've kind of focused on that um to where if i don't hit it I do get a little frustrated, but with this race, I have, and I'm sure Eric will take a picture of it, but I have I have general, and I it's not fully baked yet, but I do have general times as far as the halfway mark, and uh, times, you know, actually when I can first pick up my pace or when I think I'll be there, and then the halfway mark, and I may throw some, a couple other times in there, but it's not as specific as the 100 miler, just because I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure as to how it'll roll so and so with that one of the things you talked about is kind of getting frustrated with that like in your mindset for this i mean are you going to try the best you can in your mind not i know they're there for different reasons like you mentioned but let's throw an example two examples one you're ahead of it yeah right like at mile 80 yeah will that concern you or if you're at mile 80 and you're like way behind it i mean are you would you do you think that's something you might get caught up in a little bit or would you just have um, to go well here's what it is at this point i may i'll probably be a little bit more concerned if we're ahead of it than okay. behind it uh, unless i'm like you know hurting or you know some sort of nagging thing that's happening which i don't i have no nagging issues whatsoever which is nice so brian's been nice maybe, and oh you're right. talking about like injuries right exactly oh, okay yeah. sorry about that but maybe that means i haven't trained hard enough but you know <laughs> that's that's just the way it goes or maybe you trained well yeah and you're just, we'll go with that's that. the way it goes so um again i forgot the question so i'm going to keep keep rolling just to get f- like <laughs> <laughs> my eyes are on point um i wish yeah. i did this tomorrow my guess it'd be weird if i was like not colorblind i could really see them they're brown yeah yeah, yeah. they're they're full on they're, they're not special um, no, the, the, where we were going with it when you got it tailed off and took the left is if you get ahead or behind, do you get, well, you get frustrated? And you were yeah, I think I think that. ahead. I think I, from ahead, I'll get worried more than frustrated. Okay. Just um, and I'm going to put a whole lot of trust in Jeremy. He doesn't know that yet, but I trust that he's at least a little bit experienced with the 200 miler. I've ran with him. He knows me. 
um, to where we'll pull the reins back um, when we need to. Now, so. I know we've mentioned this before, and I apologize, it's going to be my fault now, is with Jeremy, which race, is it Tahoe that he paced? Yes. Okay, so yep. he hasn't been on the big, he didn't pace no. Bigfoot. Okay. No, and, he was, and that's the reason why he was so pumped to do it. He wants what, to get out there. Yeah, he gets to run maybe over 100 miles and... Eat burritos uh-huh. and burgers and chili plane ticket. Dogs. That's all he's got to pay. So that's awesome. just good to see the course. So it will be should be fun. Okay, um, this question comes, and I had to do Google Translate. This comes from uh, from France, um, and I didn't catch the name because there's a lot of vowels and like umlaut. Will you take aid outside of an aid station? <laughs> <laughs> well, is that a rule in this race, or this is actually since you have a crew? actually is a rule? Okay. Which is a rule in every race that I'm <laughs> familiar with, at least in this country. Um, no, but there is actually because Brian and I were talking about it. Um, some races allow like um, people to like kind of run back for you, uh, just to see where you're at, type of thing. They gotcha. don't actually allow that. So here. if they're in an aid station waiting for you, they got to stay within the aid station. They can't go out to Correct. see where you're at and cheer exactly. you on. They got to stay within. Yes, that's awesome. So um, yeah, so you know, whomever the pacer is with me, that's that's who's with me. Type of thing, so they don't they don't allow people Anybody to else on the course exactly, which I didn't I didn't know that. Um, so it's good that you know I think it was actually an, an email she she sent out Candace sent out. So, but no, I will not take aid outside of an aid station. Okay. Um, so I know it's being longer race. You just know, and the, right. all the driving. But I have stashed a lot of things out there to already. To, yeah, on the Bigfoot course, right? Because you drive just drove up there last week. Exactly, weekend. that's put, where we were. Put a couple Lynn Wilson burritos. Thank, you, but yeah. I, I appreciate that question from France, so yeah, thank you. and I didn't catch the name. Right. Um, here's a question, too, because I know you have the runner's manual. You keep talking about emails sent out. Before oh, yeah. we started, I talked about uh, videos that Candace posts. In your experience, I know this is a different undertaking on all sides, race director, yep. volunteers, runners, crew, everything, but what's the communication and just the overall um, organization been like in your point of view for it's, this compared yeah, to any other race it's, you've done? It seems, as far as any other race I've done... It's it's way more communication and, and connection with the runners than I've when I've experienced. So which is good. I think besides like the Gib Wallace race, exactly that to me was kind of easily number bar, one. Set the bar. But I'm, anything I talk about is obviously after that. Yeah, okay. So, um, but she's been there's been multiple updates with you know any changes, any reminders, um, things like that. And I think you know it probably maybe is more of a, re- not a requirement, but it's probably better that, that happens for, for a race of this distance yeah. just to make sure people know what's going on and are at ease, especially if they've not done it before. Yeah, and I think that's kind of an interesting point is we know there's people that have done it before and will go back to do it, but, I mean, like yourself, I mean, there has to be new people coming into yep. the 200-miler or they're going to go away, yeah. right? So there's going to be lots of questions. So I think her heading those off early because like i said i keep i see you know through instagram through facebook videos marking yeah. the course yeah and I showing could, people the course you know all those things you know i can pull up my phone and obviously no one can see this but um a lot of my the emails i keep in my gmail account i mean there's i could count all the updates that she sent me one two three four i mean this is just within the last few weeks five that's good six so i mean there's it's 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 a lot of good communication, which is which is nice. Has there been any curveballs, like anything that's like changed or? Um, course remains the same. The only change uh, that she sent out was um, a couple aid stations. So mile twelve, which is Blue Lake, and then mile I believe it's one thirty one. Um, crew can't get to okay. because of I guess um, either parking issues or um, road kind of washout stuff. Gotcha. So that seems to be. A I think that's the only thing. Kind of a trend. So we did the putts uh, two weeks ago. And their 50-mile course, I mean, something they couldn't control. There was, like, an avalanche area that yeah. they couldn't do. And then I read, like, the, I got home from that race in Stanhope, I think it was this past weekend yeah. up in Idaho, and they had a landslide, so they had to reroute their course. So, I mean, there's just things that happen that you can't control. Like, right. the course, if it washes away and it's the mountain's not there anymore, yeah, you, can't you can't run on it. No, you can't. It makes it hard. To reroute, I think, at that point. Yeah, you have to re- And even the bear, I just got an update today on the bear that there's a section that got logged and the trail's gone. What the sh- and so they, I didn't, I didn't get it was that. on Facebook. Oh, okay. you know, yeah. and they're looking for volunteers Facebook. to go up and wow. get it going again. Yeah. You know, with chainsaws and everything else. So I'm going to go up there and stash some food. 
Right. So it's there for me when I right. go through some ice cubes. Exactly. You know, so it'll, it'll keep, be there. It'll, it'll like, keep. I've got a month and a half. They should right. be good. <laughs> uh, bury them deep. i got a Yeti ice chest. I'll that should last. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little Yeti coffee mug. Yeah, has to, uh, sponsorship little, would be great. Just yeah. send me a few of them. Yeti would be great. And, uh, you know, what else I'll put up there? I'll put up like a Goal Zero battery pack up there. Wow. Um, um, a whole bunch of uh, sprig, spring nutrition gels. A whole bunch of Scratch Lab stuff I'll put up there um, in my um, new Ultimate Direction vest that I want to get. This I'm, is, just, I'm just throwing out right. ideas now no, for I get listeners it. to throw me some stuff. There's going to be cheese curds up there um, all, from all the listeners. Keep within that Yeti cooler. Some uh, Mother Earth beer. Wow. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm really shooting for these sponsors all the, right All now. the brands. If you know Mother Earth, anybody at Mother Earth, <laughs> uh, send them my way. Um, yeah, so what I mean, what else uh, for the race now that you're you're dialed in now? I mean, there's really nothing else that can change. Yes. Right? So you're dialed Training's in. Training's done. Is there um, any, anything that, from our last show, where you weren't quite ready yet, um, is there anything that came up that you hadn't thought about before? Like, oh, wow, I never thought of that. Or, oh, wow, that'll be interesting. Or is it just No, like not really. Just um, I'm happy that the training is done. Um, so the last longer run was uh, last weekend, like two weeks before. So um, I get to the point where I don't want to train anymore, so I know that I'm done. So that's good. The timing worked out pretty well. Yeah to where it was two weeks before. Now we have this really shitty air yeah. quality, so that worked out pretty good, yeah, too. No, I mean, really good. My last long run was like when it first started to like get bad, get bad. so that was good, good to be um, done with that. So not, no no major issues. Uh, you know, I get together some preparation as far as the aid stations and stuff, but training-wise, I'm, I'm as good as I'm going to be. Ready so, to go. Yeah. So what um, is there anything after Bigfoot? I know it's a big thing to think about, yeah. but is there stuff after? I mean, I, th- I know you guys mentioned you're going to Grand Canyon in o- October. October. Yeah. Is there anything else that, or, with the bear? Yeah, we've got oh, the bear. So I'm, I'm just I'm going to run that with Brian. Um, so we'll run that 100 together. And then um, so that's what, end of September. Mm-hmm. And then, and then October. October, we'll do the Grand Canyon. Okay. And I think that's about it. So you so should be fit. And we'll ski. For those two coming off Bigfoot. Right? Yeah, I plan on doing nothing in between <laughs> um, um, Bigfoot and, and the bear. So Just jogging down to get some coffee or something. Yeah, yeah. That we'll, makes go. Sense. we'll have Leo hike a little bit. That's about all I'm going to do. So you're ready to roll, and then when you get back, I want to try and schedule you as soon as we can. Why, it's okay. just super fresh. Super hot. Yeah, like when you're like still mm. pulling socks off because they're right. welded to your feet exactly. or soot from places that you haven't washed yet yep. stuff like that um, so we want to get you right after that we can do that that'd be awesome yeah because it's been fun to kind of see the progression because we like i said we've had people on the show that have done it so it's kind of fun i've got really good feedback great questions from people um kind of going into the first 200 because it really is like the next thing right i mean yep. not for everybody don't get like i won't i don't want to do one but for a lot of people it's like okay the hundreds have been going on for quite some time. There's a lot more popping up now. The two hundreds, the thing. But it also has people asking, and I'll get your your. You're gonna throw this out there, okay. lightning round. What's next? What's next? Three hundred, two fifty. I mean, is there gonna? Do you think there'll be something like that? I'm sure there will be. Or would that um, after a two hundred though, or would it just turn into like a stage thing? Yeah, I think you're more into probably stage race. Well, I guess like I guess the main stage. issue with I mean the main difference with stage races is, is the clock stops, right? Yeah. So I do. I mean, there's there's still there's already some out there. I know I mean, Candace was talking about a 500. I know there's the Vol State. Um, oh yeah, across one the state. across the state yeah. of you know, Tennessee. So I mean, it, these things exist. I mean, you've got those what the hour, the timed races around the tracks and whatnot. So, but um, it seems like the 200 though is like legitimately taken off and has this yeah. its own group. Not the you know I mean Vol State's one off. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, and the timed runs are different, obviously. Different um, crowds for those sort of things. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. But, like, the 200 seems like it's really picking up steam. And it's cool to see the people that kind of got in early. Is You have that core already. Yeah. Of there's a handful of people. It's kind of their game. And then people kind of go to the dark side from yeah. that point on. And we'll see, see how that happens. And They'll see, see if it goes. So yeah. I saw, saw Mike McKnight up at uh, Putts a couple of weeks ago. And it is. It's like when I see him, when I see Ben Light, and I know they've done tons of stuff, and I've done tons of stuff since. But when I see those guys, yeah, they're two hundred milers. Yeah. That's why I look at them like, yeah, oh yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he's in my head. It registers that. Where some people, it, it registers differently. Yeah, there's. I think it's 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 interesting to see the different iterations of of trail running. Um, to see as far as longer distance, 
with with the 200. Um, you see different races um, that are more of a hybrid with mountaineering. Oh yeah. Um, like like was that Tromso, whatever Norway. That yeah. Yeah. I mean, so there's different. I think there's different things for different people. Um, different strokes for yeah. different folks. And I'm not. I mean, I'm not a mountaineer. Yeah. Just not. I'm not either. So I mean, hard rock is 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 would be way. That's that's my limit as far as what is going to be quote unquote close to anything mountaineering. So that's probably why the 200 appeals to me a little bit. Is something different, but it's still mountain running. It's yeah. not mountaineering. It's not orienteering. I'm not. Yeah. It's not oh, something I where I, lost I, you in know, the mall, man. yeah. I, mean, I can I can barely drive myself <laughs> I can to work in the food court. If there's, after that, if there's a detour on the way to work, I've got problems. <laughs> I can find the food court and Victoria's Secret. After that, I'm out. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I just it's kind of neat to, neat to see the different races that appeal to different you know styles of running or styles of whatever people like to do in the mountains. Well, it's funny too because another one, and we've had it, Sylvia Greer, like she did uh, the Putts 100 last week, first female in like 30 something hours, yeah. and this week she did El Vaquero 50 UK. Yeah, that's it's astonishing to me, and it's kind of one of those things where I got to catch myself because I've had people come, even come to me, you know, which I'm nobody. And it's like, oh, so marathon's too short for you because you run 50 milers and 100 milers. So it's different. It's different. So yeah. when I look at Sylvia, though, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, she could do 100 and a 50K back-to-back because she does 200 milers. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just kind of yeah. funny, that, that thought process when that kicks and in. And I think, you know, any sort of racing and training can, can be just as hard as, as something else. I mean, you know, the idea, if I were to look at, in my mind, the idea or the thought of like training for a road marathon anymore that sounds horrible to me yeah. enough no offense to anyone that actually does that that's ever anybody has their their thing that they do but yeah Oprah um, does them yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she does <laughs> she does I saw a bumper sticker I didn't realize you're going to go there but yeah it's just the bumper good. sticker came to my head so i mean i don't think i think you can make things you can equally you can train hard for things and the distance is just the distance you choose to race and what you choose to whatever quote unquote uh, compete in and find find your groove because it is different, yeah. right? I mean, I had a conversation. I won't mention names because I don't want to offend anybody. Was it Oprah? No, she won't call me back. The anymore. big O, the big O. She won't call me back anymore. I think she's running for president. Is she? Well, that was yeah. a rumor. That was the rumor. Yeah. Huh. That'd be well, a. Well, she's still have a talk show. Does she still have a talk show? Will she from the Oval Office? Yes. Okay. I'll yes. Be, you know, see the eagle. On Everybody the gets a car, by the way. Everybody gets <laughs> just look under, your, look under your seat. Look under your seat. And you get a car. Um, but some people are talking. It's like, oh, well, you know, above a marathon, those races aren't, it's like you don't run. You know, False. I've heard people say that. And I'm not going to mention names because we got into a heated debate. All right. Well, tell me the name like, later. And I'm going to cut you off because the the most I've ever hurt after a race um, and this includes road marathons or half marathons or whatever, is the Antelope Island 50-miler. Oh, yeah. It's to totally where you, have, you are running the entire time. Yeah. And and if you're trained, you're running hard the, the entire time. So the fact that you're not running, that's that's false. Well, and, that's, so. uh, and that was kind of the, the heated debate I was kind yeah. of with is, like, you know, you run a half road marathon. They're a road background. Yeah. You know, road half is kind of like the race for them. They're like, nope, that's when you're just going. That's and fine. And when you go to, like, trail races, people do a lot of walking and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I could show you a video right now of people walking in a half marathon. Yeah. So your, your story doesn't hold water to me. Right. You know, because I've seen, you know, guys run 50Ks and gals run 50 You know, I'll say guys because I know the time on my head, but guys run 50Ks and sub, you know, sub six minute pace or yeah. 630 pace the entire time. Yeah. You know, I'm like, that's pretty good. So, yeah. um, but it is, it's different. Each level, each person, what they, what they're trying to get out of it, you, why they're doing it is yeah. different. Like I know I'll never win. So it doesn't mean I'm not a, I know I'm not a fast runner, but it doesn't mean I don't run just because yeah. I do a 50K in, you know, three days. Or whatever time with a calendar, but I think that's a valid hours, point. Yeah. 105 hours, 50 k. Yeah. That would be slow. <laughs> Me walking backwards. I'd be carrying a keg on my back, <laughs> uh, doing squats with it. But, uh, but yeah. Anyway, I think that's kind of all the questions we had. Cover them. Um, yeah. Um, again, thank you so much for everybody over the past oh, three weeks at least that have been sending these in. I've been saving them. I hope I didn't miss anybody's. I think I did a good job of copy and pasting and translating them. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. We started doing podcasts months ago. Yeah. And now we're here. And I'll be, Less than a week. I'll be uh, following on the intranet 
on yes. my dial-up modem, and I'm sure I'll try and text. Send a me an bit. AOL instant message. I will. I'll yeah. send you some some <laughs> some funny memes, right. And have you know, Brian show them to you at Aid Station. That's, that's good. Yeah. You'll pick me up. That'll be really nice. So, well, yeah. Um, I think that's it. I'm gonna take a couple pictures of your your split card. We got to get a, the selfie. Yep. And uh, we'll talk to you. It might be two shows from now, really. I think we'll have yeah. uh, one, maybe one after, and then the next one we'll get you right back on. But uh, good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time because I know sometimes that can be pressure when you're heading into a race. We uh, talked to Jeff Hart last year getting into Hard Rock, and he's like, man, I feel kind of a little more pressure than No, you I'm know? good. I, so. it's, it's, it's oddly personal but impersonal because it's on, you know, Microphone and oh, I thought you were going to say because no one listens to the podcast. No, I'm like, hey, easy, I'm right here. I'm, you know, look into my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to word it, but I, I don't, for some reason, I don't feel any extra pressure. We'll just see how it goes. I'm sure it'll go. I'm sure it'll, like you said, you go through some ups and downs, and we'll get there. You'll get there. So yeah, good luck. Uh, just in a few days, the Bigfoot 200. Tell Candace Burt Trail Manor says hello. I will, and uh, she can come and and sign some gear anytime she wants, and we'll let her. Uh, yeah, good luck. We'll talk to you in a week or two. Sounds and, good. And yeah, we are out. Thank you for listening to Trail Manners Podcast. We'd like to thank Harrison Fluman for taking the time to join us and wish him luck in the coming days for the Bigfoot 200. We also want to encourage everybody to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Trail Manners or swing by the website at trailmanners.com. There you can send us messages via electronic mail or you can let us know who you want to see, what you want to hear, or if you would like to be on the show. Until next time, this is Eric Manning reminding you, you don't get what you wish for, you get what you work for. Now go get it. <laughs>